Hi, I'm Alex Guarnaschelli, and we are going to make a skillet potato cake that is gonna wow your friends, family, even your mother or father-in-law, or that grumpy aunt is gonna be impressed when you make this. And it only takes a few ingredients to do it. We're gonna start by clarifying some butter. Two sticks. Clarifying just means separating the liquid in the butter from the milk solids in the butter. We do that just by heating it up. So I'll drop those two sticks of butter right into the skillet. Your first question is, now Alex, am I really gonna eat two sticks of butter? And the answer is no, not really. Okay. Nice and low, start melting the butter. When you clarify butter, you're not browning it. So let's take it nice and easy. Just melting it over a nice kind of medium, chill heat in a small pot. Okay, the potatoes. I'd love to say let's go rustic here and not peel them, but for this recipe, it's really best if you peel them. That said, what kind of potatoes are we using? A classic Idaho baker potato. This is the French fry potato. It is the French fry potato of the most famous fast food French fry restaurant in this country, and it's for a reason. These potatoes have that perfect amount of starch, that little bit of like almost just potatoey goodness in the middle. I'd love to say, hey, you can use whatever potato you like, but you really can't. If you use something like a Red Bliss that's really like a potato salad potato, they get kind of waxy. They don't release as much starch. Yukon Gold, another great potato. Kind of waxy, not as good a taste here. You really want to get these classic baker potatoes. Just peel them. You don't have to worry about every little bit being peeled. If there's a little bit of skin left, it's no biggie. If you have a discolored part or a blotch, just peel that away. So you use your peeler, in this case, kind of as you would a knife. You would just rotate around. I love a square peeler like this, it's my favorite. These are super cheap, which I also like. I have about 10 of these peelers in my drawer. Peel those edges. There's something really zen about peeling potatoes. Now, if you're gonna peel the potatoes and walk away and answer a bunch of emails and stuff, submerge your potatoes in water, cool water so they don't discolor because the exposure to air is what causes these potatoes to turn brown. If you're just making the potato cake all the way through the way we are now, no need to worry about the water. Just peel them and let them sit on the board. I'm gonna start with, say, five potatoes. We'll see if we need a six. It just depends on the size of the potatoes and how far we get with them. Okay. So, I love this recipe. We feel, you, you immediately feel super productive because you're kind of melting butter and peeling potatoes at the same time. So the butter is already melted. Just take it off the heat. I'll clear this away. So you can see, we just take this off the heat. One funny thing, I never put a hot pot on, right on a cutting board. The stove has lots of stuff on it, and I don't like that to go on my board where I put food. You can see the milk solid at the top. Just take a little spoon, skim a little bit of that off just to get that kind of preliminary layer off. And let this sit for a minute. The solids are heavier, so as it cools, they'll just sink a little bit to the bottom, and then we'll pour the butter out into a bowl, and that will clarify or separate the two parts of the butter. In the meantime, let's cut our peeled potatoes. This is a mandolin. It is not to be trifled with. You cannot do anything else when you're cutting with a mandolin. You must only just look down and stare at this and realize that it is the same as using a knife, only the blade is facing you, which makes it a little more serious. All this for a potato cake. Cut a couple slices, just a few, and see how thick it is. See how this is kind of standing up straight? I want them so thin that they're a little bit bendy when I cut them, so I'm just adjusting it so it's a little bit thinner. I'm not using a ton of pressure. See how now they're starting to bend? I like that. We want bendy. Just slice. You'll see as you're slicing, you wanna 
try to keep holding the potato squarely against the blade. Just gently slice. Don't rush. Don't stress out. A lot of people like to use the guard. I will admit, sometimes I use it. Sometimes when I get to the end, I turn the potato around to the other edge and just cut it away. You see we get quite a bit for one potato, right? Cut the second one. Most people cut in the middle whenever they're slicing on the mandolin. So when I want to get that extra sharp little edge for something like this, I actually cut on the sides where the blade is less used and worn. You can also sharpen the blade of your mandolin by just running a sharpening steel against it. Pretty important to keep this sharp. You can never slice as well by hand as you can with one of these. So that's, that's just two potatoes. Look how much we get. See the starch leaching out a little bit onto the board? That's fine. Don't do this at home, folks. Slow down. I get a lot of questions about rinsing potatoes, yes or no. In this case, we want all that starch trapped in the potatoes because that's the glue that holds the potatoes together as they cook. So no rinsing necessary here. I'm going to start to gather these in a big bowl. Let's cut one more. So zen. I love that you can make something out of just four or five potatoes like this. When I make this, there is literally never any left over. If I make two of these, there's maybe one slice. Um, it's great cut up and put into an omelet the next day if you have friends that are nice enough to leave you leftovers. Okay, the potatoes are peeled and cut. Let's look at that butter. You see it's definitely settled a little bit. So now we just pour. You may get a little bit of the milk solid. Don't worry about it. Just pour off all that butter. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. We're just getting the majority of the milk solids out of there. Now you can see here all the milk solids left in the pan, right? Now we have our 96% clarified butter, which is good enough. The first thing I'm going to do is take just a little bit of this butter and heat it up. I'm using an eight inch nonstick skillet for this. I like a nonstick. You can get poetic and romantic with cast iron skillets when you get a little bit better at doing this. But for right now, we're gonna use a nonstick. So take a little bit of that newly clarified butter, swirl it around and heat it up. I wanna put some fresh thyme in here. This is a few stems, like seven, eight stems. It's hard to flake thyme. You know, you always end up leaving a lot of it behind. And I figure I can make this easier to work with, and I can also perfume some of the butter in the pan I'm using at the same time by simply dropping this thyme into the skillet and letting it fry a little bit. Nice and easy. Pinch of salt to season it. Pinch of salt at the same time in the potatoes themselves. This is kosher salt. I start with a couple of teaspoons as a base and just mix. Now as you add the salt, the potatoes are gonna start to give off water, which is fine. That's what we're doing here. We're cooking these potatoes and removing the water. Maybe a little bit more, you know. The butter, right over those potatoes, ooh yeah. Little bit of pepper in there. And again, we mix. Now you can let this hang out for a few minutes. The potatoes, ideally room temperature and the butter warm, because that sort of gets the potatoes to start giving up their water and their starch. And the butter coats the potatoes really beautifully, which is important. You hear that time crackling? That's a sign that it's really cooking. 
Every time I think you're not looking, I add a tiny pinch of salt. Potatoes need a lot of salt. You know how good a french fry is with the right amount of salt on it, piping hot? Same idea here with this potato cake. You want to make sure you're using enough salt. This is a great thing to serve with pretty much anything under the sun. I never hear people say, gee, I didn't really like the potato cake. It's great for a brunch. This is great for to go with steak, chicken. It's great as a vegetarian main course. You could do this with a plate of sauteed mushrooms and practically mimic the sensation of a hearty steakhouse dish without any meat at all. So the, the time will start to crackle a little bit. You hear that telltale sign. And then it'll just kind of settle down once it's crispy enough. Take it out. Leave that butter behind, because that butter has that wonderful thyme flavor. And we're going to use that to cook our potato cake. Just put it out on the board for a second. Even just letting it cool for one minute. You can see how you just flake it right off. Quickly fried, so much easier. And this is really good to do with other hearty herbs like rosemary, savory, oregano, where it's hard to stem. And we're adding more flavor. You see that thyme flaking right in there? Flake about half the thyme in. You notice how we're also getting a few minutes for the potatoes and the warm clarified butter to kind of get friendly with each other before we build this potato cake. Mix half the thyme in there. I could almost eat this. And now the other half. This is a nice big piece. I love that. Look at that. So much easier than spending half an hour trying to get it off raw. I don't really like the stems to go in there if you can avoid it, because even when thyme stems cook, they're just chewy. You can add more thyme if you wanted. You could also build this with rosemary. It's just nicest, I think, with the thyme. I think that's the sort of earthiest and the best with the potato. OK, look at that. Touch more pepper. The more seasoned we can get the potatoes at this point, the better. By the way, I have a little bit more butter in here. I'm going to get that in there. Notice how I keep the skillet warm and ready. Now here's the big test. Swirl that thymey butter. Put this on a cloth so it doesn't move around on your board and also doesn't burn your board at all and start to build. Remember that this layer of the potato, when you unmold it, is actually the top. So it's like a bottom-up situation, right? And just start to layer this out. Now this is a case study in patience. Notice how I have butter pooled at the bottom of the pan. You've got to make sure that there's butter at the bottom when you start to build this so that you're sure it isn't going to stick. The potatoes also shrink a lot when they cook because they're filled with water. Now notice how we're going right to the edge of the bottom of that skillet. Now this is only the first layer, but it's the most important one because it's going to be your money shot when you unmold it. When you've made your full circle and you're about to finish, lift up that last potato and tuck it in there and close it, because that's what makes that real professional little thing there, that unexplainable, how did you do it? Now, I don't know whether it's just chef's luck or whatever else, but after I do my first layer, I do do a tiny touch of salt. I feel like when we bite down on this, our mouth is going to touch this piece first. So it's really important that the salt get in there, right? And then we start building. Now, I build in the opposite direction for each layer. So one layer was clockwise, and now this second layer is counterclockwise. I find this makes more even layers for the potato cake, which is important when you're unmolding it. My first potato cake I ever made unmolded like a miniaturized, sad little version of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So I'm a little traumatized by that. Just go around. You notice I started on the exterior here. So you've got to make sure to make that smaller circle in the middle as we go. Check that out. Notice how here, in the bowl, I've got that extra butter and potato starch that's kind of coming out as we go. 
Make sure you mix the potatoes every once in a while to make sure they're really evenly coated with the salt, that thyme. You can see they're getting more flexible and bendy as they sit, which is a, only a good thing. After this third layer, I'm probably going to pour a little bit of this extra kind of starchy potato liquid and excess clarified butter onto the center of the cake and give it another seasoning with salt. This is fun to make, honestly, very zen. And something you can cook completely in advance, leave in the skillet, fully cooked, and just heat it up in the oven right before you're ready to go. Get a little bit of that butter and starch from the potatoes and just pour it. This is kind of the center of the cake. I want more butter to go down to the bottom. And that starch, which is like natural, mother nature's glue. Another tiny sprinkle of salt. Got to build that flavor in. Isn't the same when you do it after the fact. And back to layering. As you build these layers, if you feel a gap or something's really uneven, put a little extra slice of potato in there to even the circle out. That's perfectly cool to do that. I made this. Um, on an episode of Iron Chef America, and I was so nervous, I could barely get the butter or the potatoes. It went all over the counter. The chairman thought it looked nice, but a little messy. And it's amazing, think about it. Butter, salt, pepper, thyme, potatoes. This was an easy recipe, I hope, to shop. Okay, again, mixing. If it gets cold and the butter clumps up on the potatoes a little bit, don't worry about it. So this is about our fifth layer. And you can see that thyme is all the way through. We've seasoned this twice with salt. Don't worry, by the way, if the potatoes start to get a tiny bit brown. It's no big deal. Once it cooks, you'll never know. You just don't want peeled potatoes sitting out for a really long time on your counter. So once you peel, you're agreeing to commit. Notice how I've got kind of a hill now at this point in the middle a little bit. Press down a little bit. Notice how I'm moving it around to make sure none of it is sticking, and I'm just pressing down that, compacting it a little bit. I'm seeing a little gap here, so when I go around next time, I'm going to put a little extra potato in there to fill the gap. And I'm actually also going to skip a center on this layer so that it accumulates a little bit more evenly. So you see this is kind of like a patchwork job where you've got to see and feel where and how the potatoes land. Once you've got that pretty top layer and you know it's going to be beautiful when you unmold it, the rest is just gravy. OK, just rinse my two fingers, tiny pinch more salt. I added salt three times. If you're watching your salt, just don't add it. Or just add a little bit. Or add a little bit of salt substitute or a little bit of spice to give it heat. I know a lot of you out there are wanting to cool your salt intake. It's just that I feel like salt was invented for potatoes and steak. I just do. See how every layer has little flecks of thyme in it because we fried that thyme and put it in at the beginning? So good. This is really my last bit, I think, in the center. Maybe we'll do one more layer. I use all the potato. No potato will be left behind. Keep in mind, too, this potato will shrink a little bit. All that butter gathered up. And there may be a little bit more butter on the last layer than on the other ones. Don't worry about it, because it'll all melt and fall where it may anyway. Every last bit. And every last bit of that starch. Perfect. OK. On the heat we go. Once you've assembled this potato cake, you think the hard part is over, and you're just kind of chilling. And you are, to some extent. But you really want to watch this as you cook. This is a mixture of stovetop cooking and oven cooking. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees, because once we get to browning the exterior of this potato cake, and the heat has allowed all the starches 
to kind of cling together and create that natural glue between the layers of potato, that's when we want to pop it in the oven and cook it until it's completely tender in the middle when pierced with the tip of a knife. Everybody's had an undercooked potato cake or an undercooked potato gratin. And you know that feeling when you bite into it and it's just, it's got that al dente vibe. You know, that's great with pasta, but we don't want that here with potatoes. So you want to make sure this is fully cooked. So start on an alarmingly high heat, heat that makes you almost uncomfortable. And you'll see that what immediately starts happening is the starch and all that butter leaves the layers and comes out to the exterior of the pan. Pat it down a little bit. See that starch starting to bubble? You see there's a lot of water coming out of the potatoes. Shake it a little bit. See how I can tell that it's loose? That's a really good sign. And one of the major reasons why we want to use a nonstick skillet here. You've just got that built-in insurance policy that the potatoes won't stick. You should, at this very moment, after a few minutes when the potatoes start to cook and bubble on the stove, you'll actually smell the starch of the potatoes escaping, right? Once the potatoes have realized that it's really hot in here, everybody's leaving town. Fill up the lifeboats and empty the cruise ship. That's where we're at. So the water's coming out, the butter's melting, and those potatoes are gonna start cooking and browning. Our goal at this point is to make sure that this comes together, the layers stick together, and that the bottom is browning. Now, how do you brown a bottom that we can't see without burning it? Hmm. The answer is, it's hard, but you can do it. You're gonna really gauge time and you're also gonna look at the edges of the top layer of the potato. We're gonna look for telltale signs of browning, and we may even, after a few more minutes, just lift a few layers just to see how brown it's getting. But for now, we're gonna let all the starch and liquid escape from here, and when all that's cooked out, it'll start to brown. So I'll see you back here in three, four minutes for the next milestone in cooking this. So we're a few minutes farther along in the cooking process. I just kind of want to point out all the little signs here that you want to look for. The top layers of potatoes may start to slide a little bit down. You want to kind of pull them gently back up and coax the top layer back towards the center to keep this potato cake really intact. You should also feel with your spatula that the layers underneath are starting to come together and feel like a solid potato cake. So exciting. If the top potatoes are brown and discolored or don't have any butter on them, feel free to baste this potato cake a little like a piece of meat and just make sure that the top is coated too. Now you can see why we're going to put this in the oven too. Because while the outside is browning and cooking, that inside and the top is not. And that's what the oven comes along to do. You can see also that the cake has shrunk a little bit from the sides and that it's actually getting a little bit smaller. Give your cake a little shake just to feel anywhere that it might be sticking. And you see that, how I'm swirling it around and I can tell that it's not sticking to the bottom? You can also see here, for example, where the edges are starting to show their colors and brown a little bit. That's a really good sign. As the water and the starch cooks away, you're essentially frying this in butter, which as far as I'm concerned is the only way to live. So after a few more minutes of cooking, I'm gonna show you a few signs to look for and then we're gonna pop this in the oven and cook it just until it's tender in the center when pierced with the tip of a knife. It's kinda of like cooking a cake, literally. All right, so it's been about Five more minutes. Can you see how that's really firming up around the edges? And see those like golden brown? Oh yeah. Dig in there, don't be afraid to kind of peek in and see what's happening. You see most of that water is cooking out. I'm just getting, a, that's what the bubble is from. The fat of the butter mixing with whatever water's coming out of the potatoes. But notice it's getting less like a boiling bubbling sound and more like a frying in butter sound and I keep coaxing these edges up away from the sides of the pan to keep the potato cake together. Okay, 
This is a good telltale sign. See those, the brown around the edges? You can see how long it's been, right? This is making me so hungry. A Little bit more butter, basting this a little bit. I know you've probably never made a recipe where you baste potatoes, but here we are. Over the top, tiny pinch of salt. I know, I know, I know, I had to. Now I put this on a baking sheet in the oven. There's butter, there's liquid. If it spills out on your oven floor and burns, you'll never forgive me. Shut it off and just pop it right on the center of the baking sheet. So we're gonna cook this in the oven at 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And now we wait. Okay, so the potato cake is not fully cooked, but it's been in the oven for about 15 minutes. That's when we take it out and do that magical flip. This is the moment. You definitely wanna have somewhere to land when you take this out of the oven so it sits squarely. You can see there's crispy browned edges all around the sides, but you can also feel with your hand, it's not fully cooked yet in the middle. So we wanna flip it, but you've got a lot of butter still in the pan. You wanna get that out so you don't have a grease splatter. So we just take the excess grease and pour it out into a little bowl on the side. That's how you can also tell if it's stuck or not anywhere. And you can see this is sliding around on the bottom. That's a really good sign that the potato cake is not sticking anywhere. Take a little bit of parchment. Ooh. Put it on the bottom of your pan. I don't like to put anything directly on an aluminum baking sheet. It's just a hang up of mine and I don't want the potato cake to stick. So I just put a layer of parchment. The baking sheet is still hot, so you're gonna need a towel for each of your hands. This is like your catcher's mitt, if you will. Are you ready? Do you believe in yourself? Do you know in your heart that this will work? Because it's gonna work, maybe. You ready? Here we go. Do you believe it? It happened, you did it. Look at that, it's gorgeous. I wanna eat it right now. But it's just not fully cooked. Pour that butter back over the potato cake. And now we're gonna pop it back in the oven for another 15 minutes or so. We'll see, we're gonna do the knife cake test and see. But at this juncture, 15 more minutes. Doesn't it look good? We're ready to take it out of the oven. It's been in there about 15 additional minutes, making the total oven time at 350 degrees about 30 minutes. Oh yeah. Now this will come out of the oven and can you hear it? It's sizzling. Bottoms bubbling, gorgeous. You know what's coming, pinch of salt. So now, I'm gonna take that same fish spatula. One hand, my weak hand for me is my left hand. I'm gonna hold the paper and the tray steady. And just go underneath. And just lift that up right onto the board. So hot. Okay. Once you cut through, did you hear that? The knife going in initially should be like cutting into the crispiest potato chip. And then underneath it, nothing but perfectly soft potato. Oh yeah. I cut this like a pie. Oh, so good. This is so good. And you made this with four ingredients. You should struggle to cut through the crispy layers of potato. Let's just look inside for a minute first. Four ingredients, right? It's like better than a wedding cake. Look at that. Check out the layers inside. These little bits on the board, by the way, yours. You eat them all. Don't collect them and give them to your friends. They're all for you. Mm. 
I'll just cut a little piece. I usually cut this into about eight. You can also just eat the whole thing by yourself with a fork and knife. Check that out. Run on the plate. You can still see all the layers piping hot. Um, you can be super fancy about this. You can get brunchy. You can get kind of Frenchy and brunchy. Little bit of creme fraiche or sour cream on the side. and a little bit of salmon roe. This is fancy. This is like seriously fancy, but fun. A little salmon roe or trout roe, the more affordable form of caviar adjacent products. Look at that. Just stop it. Maybe just a little on top like, hey, oh yeah. Maybe there's one little egg that didn't, didn't quite behave. Look at that. Now there's another thing you can garnish this with, which is your mouth and absolutely nothing. You don't need to put anything here. You can just keep cutting this. You wanna kinda saw a little bit through that top layer and then cut through. I'll just take a tiny piece myself. Mm-hmm, so good. And the salt and the thyme and the pepper that we patiently layered in here, I literally am not gonna add anything to this. So how about this? This piece is for you and this is for me. It's about one serving. 